Welcome back to Boxing Legends TV's big year-end recap for the sport of boxing. Hopefully, you guys have all seen part one of the video with categories like the best Matrix Boxer and Knockout of the Year. Today, we'll be taking a look at the legendary categories like Fighter of the Year and the Heart Racing Fighter of the Year, which, by the way, has been extremely hard to narrow down. A big hook to the body. If you enjoy our videos, please hit that thumbs up button as it goes a long way to helping our channel grow and we're trying to reach our goal of 1 million subscribers in 2018. I knew at some point I would have to narrow all the great fights from this year down to just three minutes. And I can tell you, it's been tough. At number three, we have round one from Conor Ben versus Cedric Pinot on December 13th. Fifth and final appearance of 2017 for Conor Ben, who's packed it into the last six months. In what was supposed to be another flashy learning performance for young Conor Ben, he had to learn the hard way that a motivated journeyman can beat the best of an inexperienced prospect if given the chance. And he almost did that by scoring two knockdowns in the opening round. Great experience for Ben. Ben, just like his father would have, decided to go all guns blazing instead of getting on his bike, and the first round became a shootout. The lack of defense of what can Pedro do? He's going for it here with right hands. And how will Conor Ben to react to the biggest crisis of his career so far? He reacts with fire. That's what he does. What a terror here in the first round until he was turned over by Michael Watson. But that was a level higher, much higher than this. Massive risks here, Tony. That was the most dramatic three minutes in any prospect's career this year. In what could have become upset of the year, instead it became a genuine contender for fight and comeback of the year for Ben. The two exchanged relentlessly for the remaining five rounds, and Ben, in my opinion, rightfully edged out a decision. I learned from this. I'm only 21 years old, and you know I went through the trenches, which half the then obviously he's done through. I remember being overly excited when the two heavyweight prospects, Izu Agona and Dominic Brazil, were paired up to match each other on February 25th. Ugono, by the way, is 6'5", but you see Brazil towers over him at the 6'7 plus. Brazil was coming off a pretty brutal defeat to Joshua, and Izu had the looking of a potential major threat to the champions if he kept performing like he was at a lower tier. Oh, the perfect matchup became the perfect fight. Both men traded big bombs for the first two rounds, with perhaps Izu looking the more dangerous, but things took a turn in the third. It worked for him, and keep an eye on that. Tonight he made it from round eight of ten. <laughs> yeah, another one, his celebrity in his, in his home country. Again, he obviously is unique, goes to the body again and then the head. Ooh, and a good right hand by Ugona. Oh, and then he goes. What did I tell you? He stepped in too close to Brazil and paid the price. Instead of trying to hit him with a big shot. Another right hand by Brazil. He's just showing a good chin there. Yes, but he's also, he's also showing the inexperience. He should be holy, but he hurt. Big right hand, Ugono, and then goes to the body. I don't know if the right hand caused that, though. And another right hand by Ugono. Wild right hand, it caught him on the temple. With the heads, I guess. He slowed things down. Big right hand. Ugana scored a knockdown in the fourth, but once again, Brazil showed that big heart and battled back to win the fight in the fifth by a knockout.
route of the year for me will have to go to the most anticipated showdown of the year between Canelo and Triple G. And uh, it's going to be a great fight. I mean, I can see this fight taking place, shaping out like a. Uh, Thomas Hearns uh, versus uh, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Arguably, the top two, or two of the top three pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world putting each other's skills to the test for 12 rounds was a thing of beauty. And the way they ended the fight in the last round showed what might become of the rematch when it takes place in 2018. Now it comes up to 12th round. Only one of these two fighters has scored a 12th round knockout in his career. That was Canelo against Ryan Rose. This is a good uppercut for Canelo Alvarez. And the knockout punch now. Canelo has come out as the aggressor in the club. Golovkin. But these moments decide the fight. One fourteen, one fourteen, a three way split. This is officially a draw. Again, trying to narrow down the best prospects of the year has been hard. Really excited to see the professional journey of this 23-year-old Northeast talent, Josh Kelly. I've previously mentioned Pretty Boy Josh Kelly in my last video, so I decided to leave him off here. In his place at number three, we have the former kickboxing world champion, Alexi Poppin, who simply has physics-defying speed for a man of his size. <laughs> I've read through all the other media outlets list this year, including Ring Magazines and ESPNs, but nowhere did I see Poppin's name mentioned. The cruiserweight from Russia has put out four quality performances this year, with his most notable coming over the former Sergei Kovala victim, Ismail Silak, in November. I think Poppin will be a serious threat in the cruiserweight division this year, and at the age of 30, he better get a move on it if he wants to stamp a great legacy and earn some good money. Our predictions from last year came true once again, as we featured Josh Taylor as our number two prospect of the year. And well, to put it bluntly, he overexceeded my initial expectations. Oh, and a big shot there at the beginning of the second round, and Taylor has him down. The 11 0 former established amateur outboxed, outwitted, and mentally crushed the hot rising star O'Hara Davis in July, who many thought would beat him, including the odds makers. This was arguably in the running for the performance of the year as well, and just a few months later, he defeated the tough Mexican former world champion Miguel Vasquez in a hard-fought bout. Two uppercuts in succession, followed by a left hook for Taylor. Turning up the temperature here, Josh Taylor and Vasquez. It's been a good year for Josh, and I personally think we'll see him fight for a world title next year, and win it. My slight bias for the heavyweight division has to unfortunately shine once again. But there is something about a massive modern-day tank heavyweight destroying everyone by knockout that excites me. And now, oh, that's surely it. I won't go out on a limb and predict a big 2018 for Britain's Daniel Dubois, as I think his promoter Frank Warren knows how long the road ahead of him is at the tender age of just 20. How he doesn't rush things. He might get guys out of there in a round. Sounds like a contradiction, but he doesn't rush things. The feet, is, the feet are right, the hands are right, the basics are there. I want to see more tiny little step-ups and proper learning. That's what every young, inexperienced fighter needs. And if he can earn a ton of money and hype doing it, well, only a hater can hate on that. And I'm on record as saying he's the hardest single punching heavyweight I've ever seen in this country. Yeah, me done talking. Yeah, me does them gun barking you. Yeah, me done talking. Yeah, me does them gun barking you. Some people might be wondering where Joshua versus Klitschko has been during both parts of the videos. The unfortunate underlying fact is, if we show the bout, we'll get the video blocked worldwide. So I agree that perhaps Round 5 was worthy of a mention in Round of the Year, and the whole fight is honestly my pick for Fight of the Year as well. But we had to improvise to bring three others that I felt were equally as impressive to watch. That ends it all, then I'm gone.
At number three, we have the all-Mexican affair between the ever-marching warlord Francisco Vargas and rising contender Miguel Berchel. This fight was pretty much everything you'd expect from two lower-weight Mexican fighters. A genuine phone booth fight that eventually led to bloody faces and a knock. It's ecstasy! Astonishing! This is not just a dream, it's a wet dream of orgasmic proportions! Astonishing hit! The placement is emphatic! The power! Incredible with that technique! But this is a combination of truly sweet grace under pressure. Look. Astonishing again! From the man that makes us shake our heads and say, what was that? At number two, we have the only fight from the year which left a boxer genuinely wanting their two front teeth for Christmas between Badu Jack and James DeGale. Excellent quality. And a drive from DeGale now, body and head. The fight had everything a fan could ask for. Multiple knockdowns, great consistent action, even the referee enjoyed it, so much so that he decided to get in on the action. Really driving these shots in, up close. Oh, and Arthur McKenzie, the referee, just gets in there. In all seriousness, the fight was a very close one to call. I personally felt Jack edged it out by a round or two, but the judges felt otherwise and scored it a draw. If you want to go back and watch it to decide for yourself, don't just look at the post-fight pictures because they do tell a rather different story of events. Whether this fight was actually the best or not is kind of irrelevant to me, but I felt it was so criminally underrated, I decided to put it number one out of protest. Quadras has the personality to be a breakout star, and he can fight, but he's got to fight well enough to separate himself from Estrada, who is an excellent world-class fighter himself. The all-Mexican affair between Juan Francisco Estrada and Carlos Cuadras took place on HBO's awesome super flyweight card in September. It was the same night Roman Gonzalez got starched in a huge upset, so I can see why people maybe forgot about it. The epic back and forth was like something out of a movie for the first 10 rounds. They exchanged at an astronomical rate, with both men landing in very similar numbers. I personally felt Quadras was slightly edging out the battle until the first and only knockdown in round 10. And then, Estrada arguably took over and earned a unanimous decision by just one point on all three judges' scorecards. Uh, I, I think that Estrada from the start punch, look at that! Down goes Quadras on a straight right hand by Estrada. And finally, Estrada finds the key for turning the fight around. Estrada will fall with more energy in this round. I don't know if you call it another gear, but he was able to recapture what started making this fight special. Can Quadras fight it off? Estrada! This is the biggest category of the year, but honestly, the easiest for me to narrow down. Show that uh, Terence Crawford is already the number one 140 pound fighter in the world. His ambition is to become number one pound for pound. At number three, we have Anthony Joshua after his emphatic record breaking showdown with Vladimir Klitschko, and then his almost record breaking clash with Carlos Dukan. As I mentioned earlier, the Klitschko fight was immense to watch, and I would advise anyone to seek it out if you haven't already. It was mainly his epic comeback performance that warranted Joshua placement here today. What he has done for heavyweight boxing, and just boxing in general this year, has been amazing. He's really got a bunch of new faces interested in the sport again, as he improved to 20 wins with 20 knockouts. And hopefully 2018 brings even more excitement to the sport that he can match up with both Joseph Parker and Deontay Wilder. In the runner-up position, we have Mr. Matrix himself, Vasily Lomachenko. He says, come on, I'm going to sit right here in this neutral corner. You come to me. Look at this. If you have seen part one, you'll know why and how Lomachenko's 2017 was amazing. He put on three great performances that led to all three fighters quitting on their stool. A very strange occurrence, but when you witness the sort of skill he brings to the ring, it becomes more understandable. Are you kidding me? The undefeated number seven pound for pound fighter is not coming out to continue against Loma. Lomachenko closed out the year with a huge pound-for-pound -pound win over Guillermo Rigondeau, a fight that between 30 to 40 percent of my fans thought he would lose, and to be honest, he did it with absolute ease. That's four guys that don't come out of their corner in a row. What's your new nickname? 
Maybe I changed my second name. Maybe I changed it. And now my name is No Maschenko. <laughs> All right. <laughs> At number one, we have the man that is looking just about as close to a perfect fighter as can be, Terence Bud Crawford. What, you do about it. what a punch, what a delivery. Crawford started the year with a solid performance over the underrated and dangerous Felix Diaz, and then went on to make history by unifying and becoming the undisputed champion of the 140 pound division by capturing all four of the major titles against Julius Ndongo. With the victory, but it feels great. This feels, man, like a dream come true. Crawford beat Ndongo easier than any of his 31 previous opponents with a third round knockout and became the first undisputed champion since 2005 when Jermaine Taylor beat Bernard Hopkins. That's a long 12 years and just goes to show how hard it is to achieve. Crawford's plan for 2018 is a move to welterweight to take on the pound for pound stars like Keith Thurman or Errol Spence Jr., both of whom are mouthwatering showdowns that will escalate him to serious superstardom if he can come through.